Blog Talk Radio. The motherfucking saga continues. Continue. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, world? It's badass sucking like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, because we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsta 2000 and beyond. What's up with a jump? Man, don't change that down. This should play a part of the legendary cocaine. And you tuned in live to Off the Cup Radio. Better not touch that down. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, this is Cassidy, the hustler. And right now, you listening to the guillotine. Show them the respect they deserve, man. Off the cut radio, man. Y'all already know how they doing it, man. I need y'all to stay tuned. They've been doing it for years. So show them the respect they deserve. And you heard it out of bars, mo. Easy. Keep it moving like this. Yo, this your boy Rampage. You're now rocking with the best. With Off the Cut Radio. Classic. History. Fix your face to all you haters. We Off the Cup, baby. What's up, everybody? This your girl, Bonnie Dollars, the queen of trap, representing Crenshaw. And you are now tuned in with Off the Cuff Radio. What's up? What's up, y'all? This is Miss Irresistible, giving a shout-out to the live show on Friday nights, Off the Cuff Radio. And I'm live from the 704. Make sure y'all tune in for the blazing hot music. Hmm. What it ain't, what it do. Chili Chill from that original Lynch Mob. Off the Cuff Radio, always was that on Friday night. West West, y'all. All righty, then. We are at episode 509 for an exclusive interview on Off the Cuff Radio. I'm your host, King Eric, the media assassin. And this show is sponsored by Buddy Boy Entertainment, Fleetwood and the Cod Tickers, Core Financial, Jesse's Boutique, I got my host, T-Max, with the facts in the building. We'll be joined later by Pittsburgh Pat. What's good, my man? What's going on, Pat? What's going on with you? Oh, he's going to be here shortly, man. He's going to join us in a few. But nevertheless, okay. man, um, this is a special show right here, man. And we have a legend on the line, a man that pioneered what we consider DJing, podcasting, being a personnel in hip-hop. And a part of the reason why we do what we do today. Absolutely. Um, this man right here is one half of the dynamic duo of Yo MTV Raps. And from its, and from its inception, uh, coming after Rap City, it really, really, really set the tone for broadcasting hip-hop culture on a worldwide level. Um, pretty much... From the 80s on to the 90s, it was a groundbreaking show because it showed the different dimensions. Of course, we can't forget Bad Five Freddy, you know, who played a great instrumental part as well in it. Um, If you're old enough like we are to remember all the people, the countless numbers of people that came on the show, you know, Airbnb and Rock Kim, nice and smooth, Pete Rock and CL Smooth. You know, MC Light, so many. Um, You understand how it was part of that golden era of hip-hop that resonates so dearly, that is so rever, that is so treasure. And we are on this show tonight to interview one half of the Dr. Dre Air Lover tag team of Tremendous that made our memories so tremendous. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, DJ Dr. Dre. Welcome, 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 legend. Hey, thank you so much. The blessings are all mine. I appreciate that, but I have to just make one small correction. We predated please, Rap please. City. We okay, predated we, we Rap, Rap City. City. We mm-hmm. were after Video Music Box in the tri-state area, and the thing that okay. made us so um, I should say, welcoming is we were there before there was rap radio across the country. It was my partner Absolutely. Ed and I who actually started the first morning hip hop show in New York at Hot 97 with Ed, Lisa, and Dre in the morning. 
and my man Kurt Flirt, Wayne Mayo, Al Barry, and a cast of characters that goes on and on. We also don't want to forget in the Yo! TV Raps Today show with us was my partner, T Money, who was there with us, Yo! Mail Man. Shout out T Money, man. So, yes. <laughs> so, big blessings to all those who contributed to that incredible, incredible opportunity with from the late, great Peter Darty, the late, great Ted Demi, Moses Edinburgh, uh, the late, great Todd One, Penny McDonald, Martha Diaz, Jack Benson, the list goes on and on for whoever I may have missed. The great crew in the studio, who helped us out, Warren on the camera, Joey Picola inside the booth, so many incredible folks. It wasn't just a one-man effort. And also, big blessing and shout-out to the one and only Fab Five Freddy, who actually hosted the weekend version and gave Ed and I the opportunity to host the daily version. So I never sit there and say that we did it all by ourselves, but it was the blessings of a lot of folks that gave us those opportunities to to be on the UNTV Raps Today Show and make it what it became. And it was the fact that when you saw UNTV Raps Today, Weekend, or whichever, there was no city represented. It was Yo M T V Raps period. So whether you were from Compton, Detroit, Houston, Atlanta, Miami, Jersey, New York, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Nassau, Suffolk County, you name it, Yo MTV Raps represented. Big shout out to Ralph McDaniels and Lionel Martin, the Vid Kid, for Video Music Box, because they were a great lead for us to be what we were. And the Carlos de Jesus with New York Hot Tracks. I mean, when Yo! came out, there was no radio, hip-hop radio around the country, no rap shows. Very small pockets. I came from college right. radio to the blessing of doing commercial radio in New York, in L.A., around the country, and around the world. Definitely. So hey, Ed, and know, I, wow. Ed and go I, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ed and I were in Russia before Brittany Griner got caught in Russia, in St. Petersburg, at the White Nights Festival with the great legends Salt and Pepper and Spinderella. Oh, yeah. So I diminish no one in their efforts to respreading hip-hop and rap music around the globe like peanut butter on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's what we did. That's what we do to this day. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessings, for your love, for having me be here with you today, and I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. Thank you again, man. Man, the pleasure's all ours. I mean, dude, you, like you said, man, um, you running down the list of all of those people who were so instrumental. You know, one thing about it, you know, Doc, is that when we look at hip hop culture at that time, you know, we're looking at it going back, really, you could say even the 50s with James Brown in terms of with him and the JBs, with the uh, break beats. With, Go further back. Huh? Further, Go further back. back. Okay, further back to James Brown. Further back. Okay. Further back. Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong. Okay. Cab Calloway. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, Lou Costello, Danny Kay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. They were rapping. Jerry Lewis. Yes. Yeah. They were rapping. Mm-hmm. It wasn't called the same thing. It may have been called scatting. It may have been called right. rapping, or as James Brown would say, I can dig rapping, ha! <laughs> but I can't <laughs> dig that backstabbing. Come on, man. Come on, man. This, 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 this Rap music has been around, as Muhammad Ali would say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, the greatest of all time. And, of course, the legend who helped make them that way, Bundini Brown. Come on, man. This is, this is what we are. This is a part of our life's culture as African Americans, as people of color, all yes. peoples of color. We all dropped yes. a beat, spoke our language, put it in a rhyme so we couldn't get caught saying what we did. Believe me, believe yes. me when I say we have to sell we have to learn to stop cookie cuttering our history and start celebrating mm. the legends, the prophets, and all the originators of how we got here. 
Because when I hear Ella Fitzgerald, I go, damn, she's incredible. When I hear Nina Simone yeah. rocking that microphone, whoa, whoa. Even Stevie Wonder got down. And I'm not talking about I just do I do. People got down. Marvin Gaye. This is what they did. The thing is, they didn't have a name. And they didn't. The one thing about hip hop culture first, which deals with graffiti, the, the, the music, it deals with the art, it deals with the fashion, it deals with the perspective of the neighborhood, taking, taking nothing and making something. And the reason I say rap music, because the show wasn't called Yo and TV Raps Hip Hop. It was called Yo and TV Raps for a reason, because we were talking about rap music. So when the Sugar Hill Gang came around with rappers delight, not hip hop delight, even though they said a hip hop, a hippie, hippie, dippy, dip, dip, dop, you don't stop. They were rapping to the song, sing song beat from the Cold Crush Brothers, the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Spoonie G. DJ Flowers, the great king of rap, Curtis Blow. I mean, the list goes on and on, on and on. Funky 4 plus one more. I mean, can I do it? The sequence, who wrote music such as Apache for Sugar Hill Gang? So let's, let's, I mean, let's be inclusive and stop being exclusive. Give credit and praise mm. to all that led the way. Because I was a fan. I'm still a fan. Fan of the music, fan of the culture, fan of what I was blessed with being a part of. Still am. I mean, and and it's wild because when we look at that era, you know, as you said, Doc, you know, we're looking at a time in the 80s, you know, when it really becomes, of course, Def Jam, you know, being the label. It was really, you could say, the second rap label behind Sugar Hill, you know, of course, you know, uh, you know, shout out, of course, you know, to Russell Simmons and Rick Rubin, you know, the, 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 the founders of the label. And it was really, you saw it pushing forward in terms of really being that, 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 that single, one of those identities of it. And a lot of people, especially for being a representation of black and brown culture, but you had so many others, it wasn't just relegated to that. It was white people, it was Asians. If you were in New York, you know, where it started and it caught on all over, you were a part of it. Um, but also Big shout out to like Mantronics. Big yeah. shout out. Man. Big shout out to <laughs> Jess Tice. Big shout out yeah. to the Rocksteady crew. Big shout out. I mean, yes. Don't let me start. Big shout out to Lovebug Starsky, Busy B Starsky. Go ahead. Big shout out. Big sh- I mean, come on, man. Everybody. Come on, man. Jimmy Spicer. The Adventures of Super Rhymes. It's Sue, yes, Sue, Super Rhymes. Big shout out to Original Concept and the Concept. Big shout out to Spectrum City, and also known as Public Enemy. Big shout out to WBAU 90.3 FM at Adelphi University. The one and only Mr. Bill Stephanie, soon to be president of the Deaf Gen. Big shout out to uh, President Hank Shockley, Wizzy KG. Keish, a.k.a. Keish Shockley, Butch Cassidy, Chucky D, the one and only Flavor, MC DJ Flavor, a.k.a. Flavor Flav. Big shout-out to Howard McGregor, a.k.a. Harry Allen. I got to ask him. Big shout-out to Professor Andre. I mean, let's see how this goes on. For, for, for Bill, Chuck, Harry, and myself being in that black music class at Adelphi University. I mean, the shout, shout, big shout-out to John Schmidt, who held it all together for us. At, at WBAU and make sure that we can broadcast all over the tri-state area. Big shout out to the one and only DJ, cool DJ Red Alert, Chuck Chillout, Marley Marl, and of course the master pioneer behind the microphone, Mr. Mr. Magic Magic, super, super blast. Big shout out to Africa Islam. Big shout out to Africa Bambada and the Soul Sonic Force. Big shout out to Man. Cool Herb. Big shout I mean, do I need to, must I, am I Hercules? Must I continue? Big shout out to UTFO and Full Force. Big shout out to Roxanne Shante. Big shout out to the real Roxanne. Do I need to continue? Big Man, shout out I mean, to all can, the you... female rappers that don't get their light 
Oh, MC Light. Big shout out to MC Light. Big shout out to Queen Latifah. Big shout out to Lil' Kim. Foxy Brown. Big shout out to all those women that held it down. The Mercedes ladies. Do I need to go on? Sherry yeah, Sayre, Mercedes the, ladies. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's yeah all of them. It's infinite. Yeah. Why is it infinite? Because. Because mm-hmm. that is what made us today. And my thing is, I try to get people to stop slicing hip hop up and, and defining it from this piece of the, of the culture to this little piece to name and this. I said, no. Because when you talk about rock and roll, they don't slice up rock and roll and split it apart. They call it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Period. That's it. And a lot of people say yeah. this. They even, they even try, and they did. They, 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 They've um, elected Dolly Parton into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Big shout out to the Beastie Boys. I DJ for them. Big shout out to Run DMC. How can we forget Run DMC and the late great Jam Master? How do you forget LL Cool J and Cut and, and um, Cut Creator? Cut Creator. How do you? I mean, we just don't forget who. Dini and Grandmaster, how do you forget? How do you put that aside like that didn't happen? How? Only in rap music, only in hip-hop do we eliminate our history. Big shout-out to 50 Cent and G-Unit. G-Unit. Big shout-out. Big shout-out to Eminem. Big shout-out to Snoop Dogg. Big shout-out to Dr. Dre. Big shout-out to N.W. Big shout-out to Ice Cube. Big shout-out to Too Short. Big shout-out to that's Yo MTV Raps. We never put boundaries on Outcast, Goody Mob, Two Live Crew, Uncle Joe Luke. Play. We, ne- we yeah. never put boundaries on MC Breed. We never put boundaries on Sir Mix a Lot. We never put boundaries on Tone Loke. We never put boundaries on Body and Soul, Death Jeff. Do I need to go on? Oh, I could go on. Big shout out to Master P and company and C Murder. Big shout out to that whole crew. Big shout out to Lil Wayne and company and the Birdman. Big shout out. See, that's, that's, that was your TV raps. That's what we always did. And that's why always, we love y'all. So always, well, represented, sure. always represented people from my DJ and in the street to Newcastle mm-hmm. Park and blowing it up there to DJ around the globe. And I just find it funny how we, we're dismissive of our history and everything is about, oh, well, you ain't this now, you ain't that now. Well, guess what? The one thing no artist can run away from is time. Mm. Nobody run, mm. nobody outbeats the clock. You can try. <laughs> nobody outbeats the clock. So blessings what was it? all, everybody doing what they're doing today. That's why people say, well, Drake, what do you think about rap music today? I said, I listen to what I like, and then if I don't, I won't. Same thing I did back in the day growing up. Big shout out what to the like? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Drake, Dre, we can't forget the Source magazine, and, right? And we can't forget John Blast and the Word Up magazine. I can't. Founder. I can't. I can forget the Source magazine, and I can forget okay, Vibe magazine. Okay. Because if it wasn't for mm. the Source magazine and Vibe magazine, two of our most potentially greatest writers and artists in the rap music hip hop game wouldn't have been killed. And that's Tupac and the notorious B. I. G. I I blame them because mm. they're the ones who put the East coast, West coast war on a cover of a magazine. So you instigated a fight that wasn't there. And if right. you're on TV raps right. with Dr. Dre and that lover and team money and fab five was still on the air, that would have never happened. Never. Because even mm-hmm. when Tupac got in trouble on our show and Ed had to cover up his mouth because he said, man, you're going to get them to subpoena this thing. <laughs> going off. And what happened? Exactly right. that. So when, I mean, I hold no ill will to the makers. I remember when the Source Magazine was a folded piece of paper. That's how far back I go. I remember when Quincy yeah, Jones was, yeah. was, 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 pump, was pumping the idea of Vibe. And the one thing we said mm-hmm. to them is, you got yo, y'all got to keep it real. And the only thing I got to give credit to the source is they were smart enough to put Dr. Drake, Ed Love, and Fat Five Freddy on the cover of the Source magazine once. 
Where was everybody else? And again, I don't hold bitter to anybody. And also, right. I think it was Yo Magazine put us on the cover too. Yes, but it's funny that time goes by, and people try to treat us like we didn't do anything. And there's so many <laughs> derivatives, and and I don't want to use the word copycat because no matter what you do, everything always grows, and there's always a new person stepping in. And I always hope blessings to them. Like I said, we didn't originate it, but we did a damn good job making sure we spread the word to the world. That's what we did. Man. When, when you look at the culture, man. yeah. When, when you look at the culture of how it was rolling. Because you guys, cause yeah. I would say that you guys would have been catalyst to pretty much put a lot of that drama aside because what, what you guys bring today, because you know Tupac and Biggie love both of y'all. So that yep. yes, would have yes, been the bridge did. to yes, bring them did. back together. We would have probably reunited them on the set of your own TV raps. Just like the rumor about MC Search and Hammer at the last episode of Yo, and Yo, didn't so and so come with this? I said, let me tell you something. On that last episode, nobody came in there without love. That was an episode of love. That's why so many great people, KRS One, Rock Him, Hammer, MC Shan, the list goes on, Search and Company. All were there rhyming on that episode. So you can't walk in a room like that and, and, and thinking about animosity amongst each other. That's like a blame game. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. Oh, Hammer ain't real. Yes, he was. Hammer outsold everybody. One record. Wow. Oh, it ain't about that. Got to keep it real. Really, what, Hambone? I say to every MC out there or rapper who wants to keep it super real, sign over your royalties to me. And you can keep it real, and I'll keep it rich. <laughs> you keep it real, I'll keep it rich. There you go. What was it like watching a lot of these artists? Because we're we're going through the '80s into the early '90s when we're watching a lot of these artists start their career, and you all are being active participants and chronicling and boosting their rise. Uh, what is it like to see guys like you know? I see NWA when they were starting Q when he went solo, KRS, Public Enemy, you know, Salt and Pepper, you know, Master Ace, you know, because you were part of that where they were just starting or where they were already established and you were helping to push that along. What was it like to see that baby of hip-hop and just really, really grow up to really find its voice, to not only find its voice, but to be reaching all over, and you all being the ambassadors of such an important piece of American history. Well, for me, it was easy, because I came from what I call the greatest hip-hop incubator in history, which was Mm -hmm. WBAU at Adelphi University, with my partners at Spectrum City, a.k.a. the incubation of public enemy, uh, the concept becoming the original concept, and watching and interviewing KRS-One and uh, Scott LaRock for the first time at WBAU, mm-hmm. interviewing mm. Africa Bambata at BAU, interviewing the mm-hmm. Jazz and Jay-Z at WBAU. I mean, do I, do I need to keep going on? Interviewing Salt and Pepper and De La Soul at WBAU. Um, by the time I got to Yo! TV Raps and have been very well permeated throughout uh, rap music and hip-hop and having Run DMC and LL Cool J join us on our shows, the Beastie Boys on our shows, we were used to that incubation and growth period, to doing shows with New Edition at the Roller Castle while I'm DJing and LL Cool J's rhyming on the beat. Chuck always reminds me of that. Makes me laugh. I said, I forgot I did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, you were talking about growth of artists and watching them grow, uh, watching uh, end up the rise of NWA through Yo! MTV Raps. Some people always say, oh, they were on the radio. They were never on radio like that because their records weren't clean like that. Even Greg Mack from L.A. will tell you that they have to edit their versions so much. Even when they took original concepts, knowledge me, and can you feel it and pump that bass? Songs I did and created with original concept and put it on Boys in the Hood. You know, our, our impact was vast. 
we were signed to Def Jam, so they had access to this music. Um, for Ice Cube calling me and telling me he's going to leave NWA because he wasn't getting paid, and I had to pick mm-hmm. him and his fiance up with Keith Shockley and driving to 510 South Franklin in Hempstead to meet the Bomb Squad and Chuck so they could work on America's Most Wanted. I did that. That was missing from the straight out of fiction. I mean, Compton movie. That happens, you know. Right. To Ice-T being a, a guest star in our movie, Who's the Man, as a, as a drug pusher, and now spending 24 years on television as a cop, you express, you explain that to me. <laughs> so you have Ice-T saying F the police. Yeah. You got Ice-T saying cop killer, and both of them play cops to become huge movie stars and TV, TV uh, stars. You explain that to me. Yo, MTV Raps. Period. That's what it was. That's what it was. Queen Latifah's um, rise through Yo, MTV Raps. Moni Love, my homegirl, love her to death. Yo, MTV Raps. MC Light, Yo, MTV Raps. So the beauty was we never held back anyone, the late, great Heavy D, Yo, MTV Raps. Mm. You know, what we did is we wanted to always expose folks. And if I'm missing and not saying your name, E-40 and company from the Bay Area, no slight. Everyone came through Yo. Even my homegirl, D Barnes, who I, we used to manage. And you can read this in my book, Yo Biggest mm-hmm. Stuff, the Dr. Dre episodes from 1989 to 1995, which chronicles our history on Yo and TV Raps. Man, right. So I'll let you know when that comes out. And everybody can say, well, you're going to put it out, put it out. I keep waiting for COVID to be over. Even the president got COVID this week. So I'm not going out and right. out at this moment. But I'll anyway, all, all jokes aside, along with that, our rich history and blessings was the fact we actually talked to the people. We actually walked with the people. We were down at Freaknik in Atlanta when it happened. We were down in Miami Man. at Strawberries with Luke. We were thrown out of Detroit, Michigan. At a birthday party for Luke and I. We used to do birthday parties all the time. I was there, as they as they showed on Straight Out of Compton or Fiction, whatever you want to call it, when they got ejected mm-hmm. from the city of Detroit. We were on stage. I almost got arrested because Dre and Easy ran out the back door. And they said, there's Dr. Dre. That's the one. And I was like, no, that's your picture of facts. <laughs> yeah, that happened. That happened. Man. See, though, that's I, history. I, I, and that's yes, why when you see the book, and right now we're putting together this documentary to discuss these type of incidents that happened, we really knew that what we did and our influence, before there was the Internet, before everybody had a cell phone that wasn't a jack phone, <laughs> before, before uh, we went from CDs that we were just rocking cassettes and taping off the radio, we were yelling TV raps. We filled more VHS cassette tapes than, uh, let's see, X the movie and do the right thing. Your MTV Raps episodes from Fab to Dr. Dre, Ed Lover, and Team Money, all of us. That's what that's our blessing, and it took a great, great amount of great people in front and behind the camera to bless us with that historical perspective. I mean, we, we, we look at it, and it's like, and one thing, you know, uh, you know, this is a blessing. You know, we've gone over 500 shows, and I say that to say because we've interviewed a lot of people on this show, talked to them on the air and off air, and we've had discussions about in terms of what it was like during that time, you know, when you did videos, when you did features, how organic it was just to bring people on. And it was the same thing with what you guys did. It never seemed like it was forced. You already had relationships with some of these people prior to, and even the people you may not have known when they came on the show. It was so natural. It wasn't like there was this whole, uh, like, convoluted commercial media campaign, you know, to put – it's like you all brought on people, and it fit. You know, it was you, – you really represented that culture from a genuine perspective of – Let's get these people on that are moving, that are popping, that are really, really, really pushing it forward. Um, when you think about that time, uh, Doctor, what was 
probably in terms of the live performances, which was many, because one of my favorites has to be that 92 performance with Eric B. and Rakim when they did Juice. And the, oh, God, that, that mm-hmm. was just like, um, what were some of your most memorable performances by artists that you saw there that like just became like that classic, uh, like just submitted it? Well, for Ed and I and T, we were blessed with the fact that when we did spring break, the early spring mm-hmm. break, and we were, they were literally unknown to them being able to command over fifty to 100,000 college kids on a spring break show, which featured Yo! and TV Raps and featured the late, great Biz Marquis, which featured mm-hmm. A Tribe Called Quest and the late, great Fife, which featured The Leaders of the New School, which featured um, Cypress Hill, um, when we walked out there, and the interesting thing that day, we were supposed to take that morning, and a hurricane came through. Oh man! And blew the set away. Oh yeah, it's live down up in Daytona Beach. Blew the set away. We were like, "Dang!" So the late great Ted Demi, who's producing our segments, Joe and company, were like, "Guys, stay ready because when when time's right, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna get it." We'll try to get this in because we only had that day. And after right. that, we'd have lost the show. We would have lost it. So just to show you that the master planner, the creator, the spirit above said, not today. Part them clouds. Give me some sun. Dry up the sand and bring out the fan. And we walked on oh, the stage man. set up the turntables. I started DJing. Ed walked out there. They dried the stage up. He walked out there, and we said, let's get this on. Let's do it. And when they went out there and those groups performed and we did that yo thing, that was the pinnacle for us of what we accomplished in all those years because we took MTV and we said, here's a Crayola box. Everybody get a color and enjoy. And they all came out. And those people out there drenched in rain and water, Sandy covered from the sand and being wet, and they partied with everybody. They walked the runway, they went out there, we played the music, and we had a ball. And when I look back on those blessings, and you say just even like the live Fridays that we did, everyone is unique to itself. Everyone mm-hmm. from Run DMC, going out, the Eric B and Rakim, the Public Enemy, De La Soul, you name it, everybody. Live performance. The great people who just came through, like James Brown, for a week and doing an Ed Lover dance. Pam Greer coming out. A beautiful Pam Greer. John yes. Evans. You know, uh, James Evans Sr. from Good Times to also co star of Die Hard to countless great movies. John Amos. Yeah. To Mel, to Mel Gibson coming out there in a kilt. Howard Stern talking us over the, over the intercom on your own TV raps. Our influence was widespread. Our first guest was Carol King, Hall of Fame. Well, who, who wrote, Hall who wrote, of Fame. Who wrote Carol Rock, King. Yes. The, uh, excuse me. Carol King, is. who had a hit album with Tapestry, which to this day, people, and it's a greatest songwriter, one of the greatest yes, songwriters is. of all time, was on your yes, own TV raps as our first guest. The one thing we wanted to defy, to defy with your own TV raps, was any and everybody was welcome. That was it. So when Shaq ran on and took off my bigger jacket and left with it, <laughs> <laughs> when Lawrence Fishburne ran on the set and scared the living bejesus out of us, when Ice T tied us up with, with um, DJ Evil. Oh, I forgot his last one. I forgot the guy's name. Evil Lee. Evil Lee. Evil Lee? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was yeah. welcome. Yeah, Rhyme Syndicate. Even, NG and Evil Lee. Even yeah. when, even when, and I know this is controversial, Bill Cosby mm-hmm. called to be on Yo! MTV Raps. Oh, wow. Come on, man. Eddie Murphy was on Yo! MTV Raps. Will Smith, and, before the slap. Yeah. 
was on <laughs> your MTV raps. But, yes, but Doctor, this is, this is how you influenced us because – King started this eight years ago. I've been blessed to be part of this for the past five. Um, and my brother, you know, and myself, with other people, because we don't do this on our own, because we got so many people, mm-hmm. Dyer Lansky, you know, uh, so many others. My dog Rampage, out. known Rampage since yeah. DAU days, plus Yo! MTV Raps, Leaders of the New School, Buster Rhyme, Live Fridays, Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, and you all, yeah, you all helped to influence us because you had such a wide cross section of people that wasn't as you all really found attraction and momentum. You all didn't just relegate it to just artists. You, I mean, anybody who was part of the hip hop culture, whether movies or music, you all bought on. And, and well, I want to, really... I want, I want to, I want to correct that for a moment. Okay, <clears throat> because okay, I believe. Hip hop now as a term is overused mm-hmm. as rock and roll has been, because what right. we define okay. and what I, that's what I'm to say is, we welcome people into the hip hop culture. So when I went Got to you. Got when you. we went to um, MTV's Video Music Awards, and Ed mm-hmm. and I showed up, and stroves of people, white, black, Puerto Rican, green, orange, Mexican, purple, Chinese, you name it cheered, and MTV exec said, why are they getting so much love? When Prince right. invites us to watch him rehearse with Arsenio Hall, it's like, how did that happen? When Michael Jackson stops me in an elevator to talk to me, it's like, bro, and he's laughing. He said, yo, I saw what y'all did to me. That was funny. And some people thought he was going to be angry. He laughed. He understood the joke when Team Money used to dress up and act like the real Michael Jackson. It was humor, jokes, fun, but it was to embrace music, culture, and purpose. That's what it always was about. So when I say the Fat Boys were one of the greatest rap groups of all time, they were. They were MTV yeah. darlings before there was your MTV raps. We yeah. tend to forget. We forget things. I do not. Because each one of those pioneers and blessed individuals gave me an opportunity to be on Yo! MTV Raps. So that's why I always say we were fans. That's why for us it was like everybody. If the plumber could come on and beatbox, get down and come on the plumber. Get down. Who the hell was that plumber? I don't know. He was outside. He can get down. So he was on the show. <laughs> I just put him on the show. Put him on the show. That's how we. That's that's what it was about to us. It wasn't about holding anybody back. We even had some rude guests. Come on, we had this one rude guest from England. Can't even remember his name. But he sat there and had the front. Had the meanest face. And then I was doing our best. And said to yo, get him. <laughs> y'all say y'all tried. Get him, do what you got to do. And then I still respect the dude. But when he got off the set, we tore him apart. But the goal wasn't to say we're going to pick and choose who's the best, who's the worst. That's why we never said, oh, this is the number one video from us. We programmed Yo! and TV Raps today. Mm-hmm. From the beginning when we started to the last episode, we programmed it. So when you saw those videos, those are the ones we got approved for MTV so we could play them. Sometimes right. we couldn't get them always through. And we had to wait. We played Vanilla Ice because they requested it. Did we like right. it? Not at first, but we still respected him for doing what he did. Period. Right. Period. Right. We played Rico Suave. Come on. Geraldo. Geraldo. Yeah, Geraldo. Geraldo. Yeah. We, we, we don't... We don't, why, why we got to hate on the man? There's no hate on the man. We played the Booyah Tribe. Bone Dogs and Harmony. You see what I'm saying? That was your own TV raps. It wasn't about telling somebody what you did was corny or wrong or this, that, and the other. It was about Mr. Goody Mob, play it. Play it. 
And that's because when that, you that put that out to the world, yeah. the world's watching, and they're either going to like it or they're not. And that's the beauty of it, because at the end, music is subjective. It's all about finding an audience. That's I know that was our, you know, you know, back in the day when you're growing up, you had the joke about be home before the street lights were on. Mm-hmm. You all around the city were our street lights. We made sure we were home by four o'clock and four thirty to catch y'all. You know, uh, because yeah, I, I we mean, played because, JJ Fad, Oak Town Street Five mm-hmm. Seven. I can go down the list. I can go down the list. When you look at the business side of it, what was going on at that time with some of these artists and the uh, record contracts, because you all were privy to that as well in terms of knowing what was going on to some degree in that business, what do you, what did you see then that was going on, and how has the business changed now in terms of promotion, marketing, uh, the contracts that these artists sign? Well, we we create, and I can say this very humbly, and I can brag, we okay. made millionaires and billionaires. We believe it. Yes, we, we believe did. it. We know it. No, we and at the not, time, we, we know it. We know it. At the time, remember mm-hmm. this. At yes, that sir. time, there was no technology the way things are. So marketing and promotion was a hand to hand business. Mm. And for people to get on yo with us, I can only speak for myself, and I can speak uh-huh. for Ed and T. We never took a bribe. We never took a payoff. I can't speak for anybody else, but I know we didn't take it. And I know we've been flown places and offered trips and done stuff and I, and, and did interviews. We interviewed Mike Tyson before a, hip, uh, um, a heavyweight fight in, in Las Vegas with Don King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I even broke his fence. Funny, one of the funny episodes <laughs> on Yo. Absolutely. But the business changed because the money changed. Gotcha. And since the artistry changed, and I was blessed to get to know the people I was humbled by growing up. When you grew up on the Jackson 5 and you get to meet them, and I met them several times in my life as a youngster and then as being the host of this phenomenal international show, when you get to hang out and I got to stay over Prince's, who invited me out with my late partner, Ricky Lee Mench, and I'm hanging mm-hmm. and talking with him. And he's sh- I'm, I'm in a in a um, press room with all these people, and I raise my hand up and go, oh, Dr. Dre, yo, he says, come on, man, I know who you are. And I'm like, what? Okay. And we're <laughs> laughing and joking. And then he says, okay, we'll see everybody here tonight for the thing. And Big Chick walks over to me and says, yo, your friend wants you to come upstairs. I said, okay. I said, can I bring my partner, Ricky? He said, no. I said, come on, man. He said, that's the reason I'm here. I know. No. He said, I'll tell you what. He can come up here. He has to leave his tape recorder. I said, no. If he can't bring his stuff, I'm not coming up. He said, okay, talk to him and tell him the rules. So I talked to Ricky and I explained to him. He said, but I, I said, Rick, just be cool, man. Be cool. Because I had met Prince beforehand. So as soon as we get upstairs right. in this room, you have to wait for the book, and I'll tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> Understood. Understood. It's a, when it look, we're gonna yeah. get it when it drops. I mean, we're we're gonna we do books heavy on oh, yeah, the show, books and documentaries. Of, we we do it heavy. Mm-hmm. I mean, so documentary heads over here for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of great uh, documentaries out there, a lot of great folks with stories, and I go because I read a lot, I watch a lot. I listen more, and I talk a lot. So excuse me for talking. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want you to talk Good, because man. this is, dude, you, this, we, we, you know, as I was saying, we, we, we've, we've done so many shows. We've had so many legends. Um, we, you know, shout to DJ Yella, shout to Rampage we've had on the show, you know, um, I mean, shout to out to Yellow. Big yeah. up to DJ I mean, Yellow. Yes. Like yeah, yeah. Big shout out, big yeah. shout out to my man, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, Alonzo Williams, who he and I do a show on Thursday night called the okay. um, the uh, uh, Legendary Connects. So we're going to get y'all yeah. to come on the show and connect with we y'all. Bernadette, it. Queen Bernadette will work that out. 
we, we got we got no when is when is said when is said so that's gonna be without a doubt. Um, yes, sir. The one thing, the blessings that I've had in my life, and big shout out to DJ Battlecat, just got off the phone with him, is I always remain humble to the people I speak with. And people say, well, are these people your friends? I said, no, most of them are my associates. I count my friends on one hand. And most of them mm. I because I was a child. You can get to be my friend. We can grow and become friends. And we can be blessed to continue that relationship. But I don't like fair weather, oh, because I had a hot record, a hot video, a hot movie, and we the best of friends. And then when that goes away, I can't get you on the phone. That's ridiculous. Man. Yeah. And one thing we appreciate about you so much, and shout out to Pat for making this happen, you know, King and myself with so many others that work with us, we're an independent operation, you know. We, we've reached out to a lot of people, you know, a lot of legends we've had on the show. Some people didn't think we were big enough to come on, you know, to come on our show. So we appreciate no such a thing. and respect. No such a I don't yeah. know who puts that measuring tape out. Because, see, right. I come from, and I, that's why I keep repeating, WBAU at Adelphi. And I used to drive and pick up people. I went to the Bronx and picked up cool, cool, uh, picked up Chuck Chill out to come on our show. Mm-hmm. I drove and had to pick up uh, Cool DJ Red Alert. I had to pick up the Beastie Boys. Run the MC lives in Queens, so that was easy. L O Cool J was mm-hmm. in Queens, so easy. But other people, mm-hmm. I drove in my car, picked them up, and brought them back to the show. And when they hung out and were there so long, they were like, "Yo, I gotta tell everybody, yo, y'all are no joke out here." So we cross-sectioned a lot of Long Island before artists were super popular, before when salt and pepper was just super nature. Mm. Yeah, we, we've we've been there. De La Soul, we've been there. Prince Paul, Stetson Sonic. So that's why I said there's no such thing as, oh, you're not big enough. How do you think this thing we call hip-hop culture started? Right. Someone didn't wake up one morning, turned on the lights and said, okay, here it is, hip-hop culture. <laughs> it didn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and that's the thing about it because we have interviewed people that were – we never – we don't discriminate. Um, we've had Chef – shout out, you know, Chef Shay of Shay's Way in Las Vegas – We've had artists that do paintings for, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Shout out Sinister Monopoly, a.k.a. real name Jason Barbour out of Manhattan Beach, California. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we've interviewed wrestlers. Shout out, you know, Stevie, you know, Stevie, you know what happened to Harlem Heat. You know, um, you, you know it, it's like it, it's – there are so you know when we look at the tapestry y'all of our human existence, when we look at everything between music, movies, uh, art, whatever endeavor we choose in our existence, the one common thread we have are three things: we can chop it up over good food, we can always express our feelings. And at the end of the day, as human beings, we respect each other for our differences. We embrace rather than separate. Um, We wanted to get to the book that you all wrote, uh, Naked Under Our Clothes, which I do have. And it's just just totally, it's hilarious. And it's it's informative. It's heartwarming in terms of the, uh, the, how did that book deal come about in terms of when the time came? for you all to tell, you know, you know about your experience in that. Well, we were doing Hot 97 Radio in the morning, and our manager mm-hmm. got a call in regards to them wanting to do a book with us, and we went through different iterations and ideas of what we wanted to do. And mm-hmm. it was our manager and uh, Linda West from Tin Pan Apple who actually came with the idea to make it more of a coffee, they call it a coffee book, a coffee table book. Yes, sir. So you saw pictures and we told fun stories about the things we did. Interviewing Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold when we had a show on MTV called The Show, which was a number one 
late night show. Never understood why I couldn't go any further. We did it on spring break with Super Dave Osborne and our house band, Tony, Tony, Tony. Um, that's how the book came about. It was telling stories about shared experiences to that moment. And we used to do the song, We're Naked Under Our Clothes. We're Naked Under Our Clothes on the morning show. So that's how the title came about. Mm. Now, the Who's the Man movie dropped in 1992, also bought by, and of course, the soundtrack was just bananas. Uh, because we want because we want to get to how the movie came about because it was an all star casting in terms of so many people you know uh, Guru as you said Ice T Salt and Pepper was in it so d- yes uh, Dennis Leary um, yes we definitely got to ask about how y'all put in a uh, police cruiser popping on sixteen switches and of course the soundtrack was from this artist from Brooklyn who was just beginning to get its start, but when we first heard it, because the, the soundtrack came out in 92, and then it rocked all of 1993 with Party and Bullshit by the late, great, notorious B.I.G. Um, Biggie Smalls. Tell us about how this... Yes, Biggie Smalls is the yes. illest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, simple but, and plain. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll tell you a quick story about the movie. Go ahead, please. We were please. searching around trying to decide it was time to do a movie at that time. Mm-hmm. And we had been in the movie Juice, and we had did New York Undercover. We had did a little cameos here and there. And everyone kept talking about us and our talent. And at the time, Eddie Murphy and his company, Eddie Murphy Productions, wanted to do a pilot mm-hmm. with Ed and I, which was really strange. Because everybody, comedians that went to pilot, ended up that going on and having a huge career with uh, Living Color and stuff like that. Margaret Chow, mm-hmm. David Allen Greer, uh, Tommy Davidson was in our pilot, uh, to name a few. Um, mm-hmm. MTV said, "No, no, we want, want y'all to we want to do your first movie, which we're going to do it." So they did this movie called Joe's Apartment. They said, "Yo, go see Joe's Apartment," and I'm telling you, you guys are going to be so good for this. So we're like, "Okay, we'll check it out." And I went to go see Joe's Apartment, and it was about this guy who moved into this apartment. Who had With a whole bunch of roaches. roaches. Yeah, I, I remember. Like, what the, what the fuck? There was no movie about no <laughs> roaches. Are y'all crazy? And our manager, uh, great, late, not the late great, Charles Stetler, who also managed the Fat Boys, said, no, mm-hmm. we, we guys need to do a movie. So Ed and I sat down and we came up with a concept. Uh, we wanted to do a buddy film, and we were debating whether it was going to be like undercover cops, detectives, or police officers, and we had to find a common thread. And I think Ed and I came up with the idea. And I'm you know, I think Ed came up with the idea about the oil in Ireland, but the idea about being barbers that were forced to becoming cops is what started that whole "Who's the Man" thing. Now, when we first mm-hmm. did "Who's the Man," there was only one cameo in the whole movie. But when people heard that we were going to do this, Chris everybody Cole was like, on. "We want it." <laughs> Ed went out on tour and was hosting tours for Criss Cross at the time and he mm-hmm. got them to come on and do do a scene and then mm-hmm. everything started manifesting the only artist that was slated to be in there was Salt and Pepper right that was it because Salt was playing my love interest and Pepper was playing mm-hmm. Ed's love interest and mm-hmm. then as it kept growing they kept making up parts so Yo-Yo showed up and was a part of it let's see uh, Queen Latifah became a part of it. Heavy D was in it, late great Heavy D. And even Ter- is Terrence Daniels, is it Terrence Daniels from Empire? Yeah, Terrence, uh, mm-hmm. Terrence, Howard. Terrence Daniels. Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard is in Who's the Man? Believe it or not. Flavor Flav, Run DMC got to play the detectives, including the late great Jam Master J. Flavor Flav was in the <laughs> I asked Chuck Tucker, I ain't doing no movie track. I ain't doing no movie. KRS One was in the movie. Ice T became in the movie. Moni Love, Bumpy Knuckles, aka Freddie Fox, was in the movie. Uh, Kevin Ober, Ken Ober, um, Colin uh, Colin Quinn was in the movie. I mean, 
Everybody wanted to be. So we just kept putting people in the movie. That's how, that's how all the people got in the movie. You know? And, uh, and that's... Cypress Hill. Um, mm-hmm. A Be Real from Cypress Hill was in the movie. So when people say, well, how come there wasn't a whole bunch of West Coast folks? Because no one was planning to be in the movie at the time. Even uh, Bushwick Bill from from uh, Ghetto Boy. uh from the Ghetto What's Boys, the they flew yeah. up on their own and got, got in the movie. They showed up and we made a part and put them in. And, 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 and was, he was slated to be in the yeah. movie. Big Les was in the movie. I mean, but a lot of folks, it wasn't written that way. It was supposed to be like a crime drama with comedy in it and this whole idea uh, about us being barbers who have to solve the murder, murder of, it's supposed to be our father figure slash uncle who was killed for his barbershop. So the great Bajra mm-hmm. Joel was in it. I mean, just folks came out the woodwork. Dennis Leary was in it. And that whole scene that we did, Dennis and I, you have to read about that in the book. There was a huge bet mm-hmm. that was done that day for that scene. And it just worked out. And we ended up going down into Mexico and doing a movie with him called Gunman and Mario Van Peebles. And, uh, and, and Rock Kim was like, in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, no Face was in the movie. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody and, and, in the model was in that movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that and like we were saying, you know, Dre, this is what made it beautiful because it was so organic. Like you said, I mean, you you just named damn near fifty people that just that just basically, you know, it was like a big ass house party, and everybody just came by and chilled. Um, Brody by nature, you know, who did the um, who did who did hip hop parade? We just mm-hmm. let them perform it because <laughs> Ted directed it, late great Ted Demi, and we just mm-hmm. dealt with it like. Yo, T. Raps is making a movie. That's how and, and that, yeah, and it was so organic to have everybody in it. And you know, we, you know, King and myself, we we talk off the air about it in terms of when we look at albums with features. Uh, you know, we look at movies back in the day. Uh, when we look at movies like Boomerang, Do the Right Thing, you know, Jungle Fever, Juice, you know, Fresh. I mean to. See Boys in the Hood, Trespass, to see everybody, because this is a time in black cinema where we're seeing a lot of these up-and-comers, you know, and it doesn't seem like there's this whole song and dance, you know, they give you that, uh, well, you, we'll do lunch, you talk, you talk to my people, I'll talk to you. It's like it was just we had an idea, reach out to this person and see what they say if they want to be, and it was done. It was really an organic – The funny part about the reach out to people is, like I said, when we first started it, Mm -hmm. no one was reaching out because we weren't thinking of it in that fashion. So the few people we asked, they were were put like Dennis Leary and company. They got paid to to be there. They were playing parts. Like some people, they were playing parts. But then as it started to keep going, and we were calling people and people calling back, hey, yo, yo, can we get in this? Leaders of New School was in the movie. That just kind of happened. And it was like, okay, let's mm-hmm. do it. Right, and then we just made right. stuff for them to do that fit what we were. Instead of saying, we needed four guys in a car smoking weed, we said, well, let's do it. They smoke weed anyway, <laughs> so it'll be okay. <laughs> it'll be okay. So it, it became okay. That's how, those are those kind of things kind of worked out. And um, the only thing that happened that was unfortunate is that when the movie opened, it opened against the Rodney King verdict. So we had this huge box right. office in the east yeah. and in the south. Yeah. And on the west coast, unfortunately, they were burning L.A. to the ground. So I don't think anybody was worried about going to see who's the man at that time. But you all and in the movie game. Movie. Yeah, but in the movie game, that's got how it works. And that's, I explained some of that in the book. No disrespect to anybody. But, right, yeah. right. But when you all think, but we think about you all made a classic book, made a classic movie. Um, what was it like, you know, in terms of seeing? Did you all know that this was going to be as monumental for you both as it was in terms of just everything you all contributed? Because you all, we can't mention hip hop history without mentioning you, and you know, Ed Lover, you know, Ty, we we can't we can't we can't do it without mentioning y'all. 
Uh, and well, it's thank you, you for that love. blessing. Thank you for that blessing. Thank you for that love. Thank you for those flowers um, that we receive on a daily basis, and I'm very appreciative of it. Uh, and I could speak for Ed and for T. Yeah, they, they feel the same way about it. Um, when we were doing it, mm-hmm. it was like going to Vegas with a thousand dollars scrammed in your pocket, and you were trying to make rent. You never knew what was going to happen. The money we made versus what we could have and should have made in today's world. It's the way it was. See, and you can't go back and say, oh, we didn't get what we were supposed to back then. That was back then. That was that time. There was no mm-hmm. Internet. I, if the Internet existed when we did Who's the Man, Who's the Man would have been a blockbuster. But it was, right. as you call it, a hip-hop classic. I'm blessed, period. I'm blessed. That's all I can say. Growing, growing up. around the stream. Um, yeah. What was it like for you growing up in terms of, you know, your upbringing and ultimately finding your way into the radio game in terms of just, you know, uh, I, I mean, tell us a little bit about your time, you know, in terms of, you know, from you being, you know, coming into the, you know, from the universe to the earth and finding, you know, your way in all of this. The one thing about me that most people know, and as Chuck would say, and I always refer to Chuck because Chuck always comes up with these quotes about me. He says, yeah, that's Dre. That's what Dre does. He says, Dre never, Dre never dreams small. He can't even spell it. Mm. Everything he does is huge. He always thinks big vision. And if it fails, it may fail miserably. But if it hits, it's huge. So from the time I decided to DJ, thank you to my brother, Fred Brown, Hollywood Brown, my cousin Warren, my late great cousin who taught me, and the countless other folks who instructed me and gave me that inspiration. Grandmaster Flash, sneaking up to the Bronx to watch him perform. Uh, cool Herc and Herc Lloyds, and being seen by my aunt, saying, what are you doing here and having a race to the, to the train and get on before she told my mother? Um, to watching other great DJs like Infinity Machine, King Charles, Disco Twins, I always loved the music, and I always loved what DJ did to people and how I wanted to meet girls. <laughs> so you play the right record, you meet the right girl. <laughs> right. And they always right. would come up for a DJ and whisper in the ear, play that, could you play this song? And I, always, I, went, I remember I went to a, a block party where my cousin lived, my cousin Kevin, who amazed me. He was the only man I know. We had 12 working turntables in his bedroom before there was a DJ mixer and all that stuff. I was like, how do you do this? And I always had milk on James Brown. And I went to this block party, and I saw a DJ for the first time. And a band played, and a DJ played when the band stopped. And I watched all the girls running up to this guy. And he would frown and shake them off and then play the record. And the girls would go crazy. I said, I got to do that. I mean, I'm a musician. I play bad trumpet. I'm in a band at school. But the reaction he gets by playing a record, I got to do that. I got it. I don't know how. I got to do that. I grew up with the late, great Frankie Crocker on the radio. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Leonard, late, great Chuck Leonard. Um, So many people, when WBLS took over FM, and growing up listening to AM radio in New York. So I was always perplexed by the DJ. But when I started DJing and we started doing our gigs late on a Saturday, and we used to, at the end of the gig, we were packing up our equipment, and we put out a portable radio with the aluminum foil on it, and we tuned in to Mr. Magic on, on um, a WB, or not WNWK, on WHBI, and making tapes from that. And listening to him, I said, I can do that. I got to figure a way to do that. I want to be a part of that. How can we be a part of that? So I always looked for that. So by the time I got to Adelphi University, thank you to my girlfriend with the red leather pants and the big booty that, that made me chase that up and go to Adelphi University, I found WBAU. 
being in that class with Chuck D, Bill Stephanie, and Harold, Harry Allen. I got to ask him. And they introduced me to BAU. I heard about BAU, but then I got to be there. I, th- I never realized it was at Adelphi University. And the rest is pretty much history. Hey, we got Pat on, man. What's good, man? Hey, what's going on? What, what's going on, guys? I apologize for the tardiness. Dr. Dre, okay. how are you tonight, sir? You're tardy? Okay, well, I got to go. Thank you, everybody. We're talking to the... <laughs> <laughs> you won't come late to my interview. I got five minutes and I got to be out. But anyway. Nah, I ahead. know, man. I, I ask Eric, man. I feel terrible, man. I'm just glad. No that, I'm so thankful you came on, though, Dre. And you know, I, I interviewed a co- I interviewed you a couple years back on my other show. You, I always tell people you were my favorite guest, and uh, I really wanted my two co-hosts that never got to talk to you. I really wanted them to have the bulk of this interview anyway, because it was well, a special moment always... to me. I wanted them to have it too. You know what I mean? Well, that's why there's always room for a part two. <laughs> Always, so you're there's, always there's so much more I'm doing. You can ask these I'm guys before I invited you on the show. Even you can ask these guys. You can even look on our YouTube, and you'll see that I consistently let everybody know that you're the reason why I do radio, and I believe that you're the reason everybody does radio. As Thank you. you. And, uh, Thank you. Your, your show to me was the first show that we cared about the hosts. You guys weren't just here. To, this is the new video. You guys had personality, you had character, and I think that what you guys did was so groundbreaking that we wouldn't have any of these things. Like things wouldn't be the way they are if you guys didn't do what you did. And uh, I, I consistently let people know that the reason why I even do this is because of you. That's a hundred percent fact. You. Uh, you're an. And to be honest with you, me, and, Ed and uh, I sat down before. We shot one frame of your own TV raps. We said, whatever we do, don't make up a version of yourself. Let's just be ourselves. Everything we do Mm -hmm. is what we did, who we are. Bring those experiences to the screen. Because it's so easy to get lost into the hype and try to act Mm -hmm. like you need to be here. And even with its popularity, whether it be on television, film, radio, books, records, you name it. We bought who we were to our career. That's, yeah. That was it. This is who we are. Yeah. And I think that yeah. laid the format for everything. I, I, I honestly believe I feel, I've said this before. I think anybody that is behind a microphone, behind a camera, the broadcast, hip hop, in any way, I trace everything back to your show. I think that you guys laid the blueprint. You guys did it right. You guys were about the culture. And you made it fun. You made it important. You, you know what I mean? Like you provided every aspect of it. I feel like it was the the best representation in its purest form of what this thing is supposed to be about. And I think that everybody owes you a bit of gratitude for that. I honestly believe that. So uh, thank you. I would ki- I kiss the ring, Jay. I kiss the ring, man. And you know, thank you're you always welcome on our show, brother. I'm on it. And I and I said to the gentleman. I do a show every Thursday with um, the West Coast Godfather Hip Hop, Godfather West Coast Hip Hop, Legendary Connects, and my uh, uh, great great uh, VA, uh, Queen Bernadette, the great connector of all us, of us all. Right. And we got to get you guys to be on the show. But as I always say to everybody, hey, this is part one. We're definitely going to do a part two. I got stuff to talk about um, now and more. I work with my Dr. Dre's Victory Foundation that deals with. Uh, what I go through from a health position because I consider myself being super BAD, super bad. I'm a blind amputee, a type 2 diabetic, and nothing slows me down. So we have some very interesting things that are going to be coming up in the next few months that we're working on and putting some things together, and the opportunities will be abundant. So as the gentleman was saying earlier, oh, we're worried about if this show is big enough for you. No, am I blessed enough to be here? I thank you. We we appreciate you, Dre. We're definitely going to stay Absolutely. tuned, and we definitely got to do a part two to this, man. And uh, I'm Absolutely. definitely going to follow everything you're doing, man. We appreciate you greatly, and vice, Dre. And vice versa. I really appreciate and you. And vice versa. We, 
Dre, we love you so much, man. And we have to say Thank this. To, we we have to say this to our legends while they're alive. Like they like Digital Underground said when back there uh, back in the day with their song "What's Up with the Love." Rest in peace to Tupac and Shock G. Yes. We love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We, we can, can, I, can I tell yeah. everybody one thing so they can stop calling me every time somebody okay. passes away? And they go, Trey, are you okay? I'm okay. What's the matter? Oh, so-and-so passed away. We'll, we'll just check and see if you're alive. I'm alive. Thank you. I'm good. Appreciate it. But big up to everybody. And if you want to reach out to me, if you guys don't mind, if I just say, you can reach me Man, on your Instagram ahead. and your Twitter. On your Instagram and Twitter, it's D O C. T O R D R E number three nine Instagram or Twitter. Please check in, check me out, hang out. Love love to get back and forward, back and forth with you. And like I said, there's got to be a part two because um, definitely I, I I'm, I'm blessed with you guys asked me to be on, and there's more to talk oh, about. Man. So man, we'll, we'll, since, we'll, since do, beginning. we'll do many parts as you want, Dre. You're always welcome on. And we mean that, Thank so we you. definitely will reach out and in due time for a part two for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dre. My, my hat's off to you, sir. Tip of the cap. Tip of the cap. Yes. <laughs> there you have it, man, the legendary Dr. Dre, man. And, uh, man, I apologize for my tardiness, guys. I'm so glad you came on and, uh, you guys Don't held it down it. for me, but it, for, for real, I wanted you guys. I always said that Dre was my favorite guest, and uh, you know, I wanted you guys to have the bulk of the interview anyway, because I uh, it was the first time I had Dre on. It, it meant so much to me. I wanted you guys to have that same experience I did. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, to me, this is like iconic, man. You know what I'm saying? Like. So the interview Dr. Dre is like it to me it means a lot, you know what I mean? So I wanted you guys to share that, you know. I want you guys to have that same memory I got, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Oh my bad, man. Um, I thought you hung up, my brother. I'm sorry I'm sorry, I thought you hung up, Dre. My bad, man. No, 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 no. I'm I'm about to oh, no, no, no. like I said, okay, if we we can get together, we'll set up a part two and we'll go over yep. some of the stuff. Like I said, I'm doing with the foundation and what I want to do to help folks. Uh, and that's why I said I'm very particular to go out right now. People are like, oh, come on, don't go out. And I go, not yet, not yet. The pandemic yeah. isn't going. And I want people to, <clears throat> I want to end on a little political health and love note. Go. And I put it in that order. Yeah, go ahead. I want to go say ahead. Your, your viewers, your listeners, that we all need to get up and come together, all people all cultures, all shades, all all genders, and do what we need to do in November, November to make sure we get rid of these Republican representatives out of our government. Because don't blame Joe Biden. Don't blame Kamala Harris if things aren't working. They're limited unless you give them the representation in the Senate and in the House to pass the laws that you want passed. The Supreme Court has already showed you their code. They repealed the rights for women with Roe versus Wade. Let me repeat that. They have <coughs> repealed for the first time in the history of the United States, taken away the rights of women. <laughs> I really do not care your position on abortion. That's, that, that's not my concern. If you want to be right to life, God bless you. You want to be right to choice, God bless you. But you do not have the right to take away a woman's choice to do what they do with their body. Absolutely. And when 10-year-olds are being sexually abused, impregnated, and they're then being persecuted for having an abortion from a 10-year-old, if we don't come together, then don't blame the white man. Don't blame Joe Biden. Don't blame Kamala Harris. Don't blame the Democrats. Blame yourself. I don't know what in people's mind think that these Republicans are playing. If you haven't been watching the congressional hearings, that's on you. You're missing the information. These folks are not playing. Second, if we don't in our community 
do something about gun violence and our personal genocide to our communities, then we need to hang it up. It's done. I don't care if people say it's drill rap that's doing it, uh, the bringing Tupac did it, or, or, or it was uh, a Nipsey also. No, we're doing it. We are eliminating ourselves. When 13-year-olds are shooting at each other for gang prowess, it's time to put the brakes on everything. We know who's doing this. You know who got to go. Oh, but the police are gonna miss down. For every one innocent they kill, how many do we kill per day? What mother and child needs to be shot going into the local bodega? What eleven year old girl going to the nail shop needs to be gunned down? What baby in a stroller at two years old needs to be riddled with bullets? Don't blame nobody, blame us. We have to make change. Not talk, not preach. I ain't into that. And I'm not into marching up and down the street screaming anything. I'm into let's do this. Because when the game started, and I won't call it the game, when we did self destruction, you had it for self destruction, after the great stop of Rock was assassinated, we're still doing the same things. What's wrong, people? Don't blame anybody. We know who's doing this. We know in what communities this is about. Not just talking to talk. I've walked the walk. I've been there. I've been in the middle of blood and crip meetings with guns on the table with Jim Brown and company. I've been all over the country with nonsense. It's like, yo, we're killing each other. This is genocide. We're doing it to ourselves. So I end with, like I said, we have to find the love. And people say, Joe, why do you always keep saying love? Because love is stronger than hate. Hate carries weight. It just does. If we could find the love, then maybe we could talk that 13-year-old to put that weapon down. Maybe we could talk to that gang members to say, we've got to stop this. Maybe we can get Chicago to calm down. Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, Nassau, Suffolk, Compton, Houston, Atlanta, Miami. Do I need to keep going? We can't even go to a party anymore. You can't even go to a funeral and people are doing drive by There was a pool party here on Long Island, and there was, the, the dude shot up the pool party. Why are we shooting pool parties up? Where yeah. is the love? And that's what I preach. I preach the love. And I will do everything I can. Because I follow, I follow El Haj Malik Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X. Max. I explore what the great Dr. Martin Luther King wanted to do, but now no more excuses. And the mega, all these folks that died before we dropped the beat, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Say it loud. We all have to come together. And I ain't singing no kumbaya, and I refuse to sing We Shall Overcome. It's time to do it. And I mean it. No more self-destruction harmony songs, because nobody seems to move. It's time to get everybody. And I believe in Second Amendment rights, because we must prepare for the Civil War that is in place, happening to us right now. Ask the children and the families in Vivaldi, Texas. Mm. We're killing, we're killing fourth graders. This is what we're doing. We're letting white supremacists gun down people in Buffalo at a grocery store. This is what we're doing. We even had the white supremacists climb the building in a dress. This is he was determined. He tried to take 83 people out. This is what we're doing, people? Everybody has to step up now. No more punching Asian people in the face, telling them they brought COVID over here. No more of that. No more going up against the people 
uh, the LGBTQ community. We need everybody, no matter what your personal feeling is. Everybody ain't going to agree. But if everybody gets wiped out, does it matter after that? Does it really matter? So I want to bring the love. Let us bring the love. Because only we can stop this trend. And in November, if we don't put the bright people in office, don't complain. If you didn't vote, if you didn't get out there and register and play with their cockamamie games and make your vote count, don't tell me about Biden didn't do anything. He's a president. He's not a dictator. She's a vice president, not a dictator. That jackass, 45, tried to kill his vice president. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they don't talk about that, do they, doctor? They don't talk about all that. <laughs> yeah, they just, that's what they talked about last yeah. night. Last night, that was all over TV. Yeah. They played the tape. He was saying it. And he's walking around free. So if you if you upset that Ray Ray's in jail, we should be doing campaigns. Put Donald Trump in jail because he said he was going to be. He caused an insurrection. He committed treason. How come we're not out there protesting and putting in the way? Stop being fooled by the foolish. Let's bring the mm. love, man. Let's bring the love. Love will conquer it all. And I don't care if you're a Christian. Catholic, Buddha, Muslim, I don't care what your faith is. My faith is love. It's a powerful faith. Powerful. The creator, there's nobody. I fear no man walking on this planet. Because my spirit with the creator and the master plan is that strong. When he, when that spirit says it's time to rise, I'm right there. Right now, it's telling me let's march on, not just bark and scream and holler and you go to the same old people. No, it's time for everyone, all of us. We all know. We all know. We all come from a struggle. Let's turn that struggle into our excellence, into our praise, into our love. Let's stop worshiping items and worship our lives and protect our queens at all costs. Our queen, Absolutely. if that's not enough to get you out there and say, nope, we ain't having this no more. Biden got to change the Supreme Court. Because those three crazy crackers, and I call them for who they are, they're not playing. And Uncle Clarence Thomas, he got to go, too. He got to go. People, people you know, people got to understand what's going on with this because, the thing is, is that, like you were saying, Doc, the, uh, the, this is a lot of stuff that was done by the Supreme Court. So these decisions, these were not codified into law yet. So this is what, so these, this is, like you said, was going on. This was yet. done by us sitting on our hands for 40 years. You are right. Since Ronald Reagan right. was elected president, to this day, we sat around thinking, my vote don't count. I ain't going to do nothing. They ain't going to help me. This ain't going to do this. This ain't going to do that. Well, you let Manchin and Cinema from the Democratic Party screw us out of the Build Back Better plan. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. So we got to put more senators in place. We got to go and flood our voting block. We have to get Stacey Abrams to be governor of, of, of Georgia. How do we live with ourselves when two women work in the elections was called out by that bastard, Donald Trump, and their lives have been changed forever and get death threats? And Kanye West, publicist, goes to the house and knocks on the door? What? We just, we're just taking that? We're just taking it. But these two queens, these two incredible strong women have to fight every day to exist in this country. Are we crazy? I'm going to tell you the truth, because if there's no women, there's none of us. Mm. If there's no women, I don't care what you say, there's none of us. And I would rather put a woman in charge and some of us crazy uh, backstabbers and liars to the throne 
And let me tell you something. If I have another colored person of color say that they're tired of people, us calling each other victims and trying to holler and scream, we need to put them under the slave ship and let them figure out what a real victim is. There's too many people of color with fake privilege. Fake mm. privilege. It's time to call people out for who they are and what they are and say, we're not going to take your crap no more. We need to speak the language of our people coming from different areas and other cultures. If you don't know Spanish, teach and learn Spanish. If you don't know how to speak French, speak French. Go learn, learn French. Speak to our neighbors. Speak to our people and teach them what we've gone through and tell them, no, you have a misnomer of what is here. You don't understand this. Learn to speak Chinese, Japanese, and create a strong, real coalition. I ain't scared of bringing white folks in as long as you work with us. Work with us. Because there's only one planet. And right now, this place is on fire. I don't know where all y'all located, but we're dealing with 100-degree temperatures and for real climate change. And those bastards in, in the Supreme Court just voted against the EPA and trying to bring this, 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 this heat down. When every coast is right. sharks swimming up and down the coast, but yet <laughs> our white brothers and sisters are trying to defy human nature, and they go out there on them boogie boards and surfboards. I said, well, be my guest. Sharks won't eat sushi anyway. I don't get that. When you have giant size um, ice blocks falling into the Atlantic Ocean, destroying, destroying the food the animals and fish eat off of because they wiped out the plankton. We better worry because if the ocean goes, we're dead. If the seafood goes, we're dead. We're fooling ourselves. And y'all think, well, I got some air conditioning. Not when the grid goes down. (laughs) (laughs) How long do you think you're going to survive with 100 degree temperatures and sub sub zero winters? Minus tens. Where you've never seen snow before, all of a sudden you're getting a foot of snow. We're not catching on, folks. If we don't come together, we will not save our own human existence. So that's why I say love is stronger than anything. Any AR-15, any JR-15, any cockamamie, crazy senator, congressperson who thinks their survival is the only survival, not in human existence. Because the one thing about our people and hip-hop culture, we always find a way. From two turntables and a microphone to spreading this love all over the planet. Rock, rock, planet rock. Don't stop. He rendered the lesson. Man. Thank you so much, Dre. Thank you. Um, the scientific Powerful soliloquy, the, soci- the, the, the science of the super soliloquy from the iconic legend himself, of which we can all learn those lessons. And lessons are infinite. For those listening out there in the universe, do the knowledge, decipher the language, and know the math of the method, or the method of the math, rather. Um Dre, you prescribed us and gave us a, you know, uh, a treatment of real food for thought. We can't wait for part two. We cannot wait for part two. I'm a collaborator. I'm a collaborator. I'm not here to walk the walk alone. I move as a team. Never move alone. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Yep. Love you, Dre. Love y'all. Y'all have a beautiful night. Love you too, man. Thank Look you forward to you. You too. Thank you. Oh, man. Big shout out. We'll see you on Legendary Connect. Peace yes, sir. Love. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Definitely, man. Definitely so right. ill, man, with the Legendary Dr. Great with your MTV Raps. Popping Jim. Oh, man. Giving 
Yo, was it was it dope, yo? Yo, did you, you guys have a good Man, interview with him? That was past dope. That was legendary. <laughs> and I'm glad, bro. Bro, like I had so much going on today that like I never even realized that we were. I thought we were starting at nine, not ten. Like I even said to Eric earlier, like. Yo, bro, if I would have just said, like, the time, I'd be lazy. I was like, yo, I might be a couple minutes late, just, like, 10 after. If I would have said 9, 10, he would have been like, no, nah, bro, we started 8. You know what I mean? And I could have made it. I didn't even – I man, I was like, damn, man, I hope I didn't miss the whole joint. You know what I mean? But, like I said, though, like, I'm glad you guys got the – like, I mean, you guys know how much, that like, his interview means to me on, my, on the old show. You know what I mean? And, like – I really wanted you guys to, you know, I'm on this show now, man. Like, you guys are my boys, bro. Like, that interview, like, how, and no matter what style of hip-hop you're into, like, no matter what, like, that's, that dude's an icon, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what you're into. Like, that's a Hall of Fame type shit. You get to interview a guy like him. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm I'm glad you guys got to talk to him for an hour. You know what I mean? But... I can't wait to listen to it back, man. I want to hear what, what all he talks about and shit, man, because he, he loves to talk, and he brings his A-game every time. You know what I mean? Like, he'll he'll give you good content. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad he came on, though, man. I got to say, I, I respect, man, I, I, a lot of you rappers out there can learn from Dre. We, uh, we had that show booked like two weeks ago. Something came up the night of the show. He couldn't do it. And he waited about a week to reschedule with us because he wanted to make sure he could definitely make it. He didn't want to, you know, not, you know, not be able to make it twice. So he waited a little bit, made sure he could make it, confirmed the date, came on, gave a great interview. A lot of rappers can learn from somebody like Dre. But uh, man, I'm I'm really glad that you guys got the chance to interview him, man. Got you. It was a real dope deal, and we learned a lot about the history and part of that break that they was a part of. So I was basically mostly quiet, but the most part, I wanted to soak it in. Yeah. I mean, like, when I interviewed him, I, I mean, you lay down a question, man, and he'll give you a lot to where, like, you know, it, it's hard to, like, you know, we talked about the first time when we broke the his head, like, we were going to try to keep it like a half an hour. I mean, bro, I, I called in at 4 after. It's 9.32, and I called when he said he had five minutes left. And he, you know what I mean? He still gave us a half hour. Like, he gives great interviews. Like, he gives you a lot. You know what I mean? Like, you can, you probably have, like, 20 clips worth of good shit in there. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah, he, yeah but he, he says cool shit, too. Like, he don't just say, like, He'll give you, like, some cool shit about stories. He goes beyond just, like, the cookie-cutter answer that you can just fucking Google. You know what I mean? Like, he he's definitely a great guest. I think that he's very, like, you know, he's very aware of, like, hey, now, like, let's not make this a waste of time for either one of us. You know what I mean? Like, he gives a great interview, gives us great content. Like, he knows what it's about, and he brings it, you know, his A game. And I'm glad to hear he's still out there doing it, too. He's got his own show, too. I'm going to have to check that out. Well, absolutely. Yeah, he's a very intelligent dude, man. He, I mean, dude, who got more, more, uh, I mean, dude, who has stories and experiences like Dre? You know what I mean? Like, imagine what that was like hosting that show, like, as the game turned, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like he he was at the height of all of it. Like, you know, like he saw, like, the public enemy phase, like, phase into NWA and then phase into Death Row and Bad Boy. Like, he saw, like, the progr- he was right there in the middle of it. Like, oh, he was, you know? So, like, imagine how much, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. You know? I mean, look how many just memories just your MTV rap has. Like... Like when I'm when I'm thanking him and showing him, like I respect him and shit. You gotta understand, I'm from Pittsburgh. We got Hot 97. Like when we first started getting anything from New York, it you would get Ed and Dre's. Like, uh, what's it called? Um, 
Not a simulcast. Ah, oh, fuck. Syndication. Like, that, his morning show was in syndication. Like, at least on the East Coast it was. Because I know, like, Philly got it. Pittsburgh got it. Maryland got it. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't get Hot 97 all the time. But, like, on our hip-hop station, we would get Ed and, you know, Ed and Dre's morning show. And then... We got, like, another hour show, like, around, like, traffic time, like, 5 o'clock or, like, rush hour. And, but mm-hmm. it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't Flex, though. It was, I can't remember who it was. But I don't know if we got Flex. Like I was, you know, young and shit. But, so, like, I know Dre as a radio personality. Like, I, I know him from Hot 97 and Power. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, I knew Ed and Dre. Like, wow, like... I, I never didn't know who they were. Like, put it that way. Like, my whole life, like, I either remember hip-hop was them having young MTV raps, or I remember listening to them on the radio as well, like, as I grew up. So, like, there was never a time where they weren't, like, giving me the new hip-hop of the day, pretty much. You know what I mean? Like, and back then, man, like, for me, you didn't really care so much about the records they were playing. It was kind of like you you loved just the, the culture of it, and like back then, if you remember, like this, if you were a real fan of somebody, like the single wasn't always that great. Like it was just kind of a single that appealed to everybody. You had to have that like song, you know what I mean? That you would listen to them to find out what all's going on, who all's dropping shit. They had dope interviews. Ed, Lisa, and Dre, and Lisa ended up. After they got rid of them, got fired, everybody, uh, Lisa ended up working for Howard Stern. But, uh, like, I remember the roll call every morning. Like, I'd probably still know the words to the roll call in the morning and shit. Like, but yeah, so, like, whenever I'm, like, giving Dre his flowers, like, I followed him my entire life. Like, he, him and Ed were, like, crucial people to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all the rappers that, like, are legends to me, like, I know them because of Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. You know what I mean? And, like, like I said, they were the first people that made you care about the host. Think about how important the host of a show was after Ed and Dre did Young TV Raps. Like, they had yep. to have personality. Like, even if it was a totally different dynamic than what Dre and Ed had, like, but, like, they had to have a personality, like, you couldn't just hire somebody to say, here's the next video, like, nah, like, they had to be funny, they had, you know, they had to have something to bring to the table, they had to have some kind of, like, entertainment aspect to it, you know what I mean, and with, like, with their, them in their radio career, they came up in a crazy time, they, like, they, had, you know, they had to deal with Howard Stern, Opie and Anthony, and the rival radio, you know, when they were at 97 and Power came, and then they went to Power and everything. Like, they were part of that feud and everything, too, you know what I mean? Like, caught in the, they lived through that. They lived through Star and Buck Wild. You know, like, they lived through, they, they were, like, at the radio station when Star and Buck Wild were causing controversy and shit. So, like, they had to be extreme, too. Like, I, I remember seeing Ed Lover on, like, Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn back in the day. Because, like, he, they had to get out there and get it themselves and, like, play the game. Like, they had to be still in the mix because there's all these new faces. And at the same time, Wendy Williams and Charlemagne were coming up. And we see what Charlemagne ended up working for power and being with Envy and shit. Like, they lived through, like, the whole star getting charged for the shit he said about Envy kids. Like, you know, they they had to compete with, you know, morning ratings with Howard Stern and Opie and Anthony, like, even I miss and shit. Like, you know, they were part of New York radio. Like, uh, like all the numbers matter. Like, it doesn't matter, like, that you're a hip-hop place. Like, it don't matter. Like, you got to get the numbers. You know what I mean? So, like, my whole life, I'm tuning in to Ed Lover and Dr. Dre to get music, whether it was the early days with, you know, like NWA, like Dre and the Chronic and shit like that, like, early in my life to... All the way up to like fifty cent, like you know what I mean, maybe even beyond. Like, but yeah, like I, I, that whole time I, I was getting new music from Ed and Dre. You know what I mean? So like that, that like that, that's how important that dude is to me. You know what I mean? Like, 
that's like a bucket list guest for, for that was like that I really like I took a shot in the dark asking him back in the day if he'd come on, and mm-hmm. he replied back, and I was like, no shit, you know what I mean? And like, bro, he brought the fucking the best interview I could have ever asked for, you know what I mean? And like, I you know you guys have heard me talk about it, you know what I mean? Like that interview meant the world to me, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm glad you guys got to experience it as well. Like, that's dope. I can't wait to listen to it back, man. Man, well, Pat, we can't thank you enough. We love that package. Well, look, man, I guess uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But, uh, okay. man, I'm glad that that went down. I'm glad you guys got to experience that, man. Uh, thanks to Dr. Dre. Thanks to anybody that listened tonight. And uh, thank you guys, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all. I'll talk. I'll talk to y'all soon, man. Yes, sir. No doubt. All right, y'all. Take care. You too. You Peace. too, Pat.